Drake is one of the biggest artists of all time, and he's not afraid of beefing with other rappers. The whole world went crazy after he went for Meek Mill's neck back in 2015. But when Drake started beefing with Pusha T, the situation got so wild that some OGs in the game allegedly had to step in so nobody got killed. Here's what went down. A lot of hip hop fans think the Drake and Pusha beef started around 2012, but the situation actually goes all the way back to 2002. Back then, Pusha and his brother No Malice was a duo who went by clips, and a lot of their production was handled by Pharrell Williams and Chad Hugo, aka The Neptunes. Birdman featured clips on his track, What Happened to That Boy, and The Neptunes produced it. There were some money issues between Birdman and The Neptunes, and Pharrell never worked with cash money again. Four years later, Lil Wayne allegedly asked Pharrell for some clothes from his Billionaire Boys Club brand, but Pharrell shut it down. Pharrell and Clips was also known for rocking Bape before anyone else in the game. So after Wayne wore Bape on the cover of Vibe magazine and rocked Billionaire Boys Club merch in the video for his track Hustler Music, Clips dropped the track Mr. Me Too and called out dudes copying their style. Wayne clapped back in an interview with Complex. He talked about Pharrell and said, that nigga wore babes and y'all thought he was weird. I wore it and y'all thought it was hot. Pusha and Wayne sent shots back and forth, but it was never nothing too serious. In 2011, Drake dropped the track Dreams Money Can Buy and allegedly took shots at Pusha with the lines, and I feel like lately it went from top five to remaining five. My favorite rappers either lost it or they ain't a lot. Drake has talked about being the Clips fan back in the day, so a lot of fans thought this bar was aimed at Pusha. Pusha responded by using the Dreams Money Can Buy beat on his track Don't F*** With Me. One bar says, rappers on their sophomores acting like they boss lords, and fans linked it to Drake since he had just dropped his sophomore album. Then, Pusha allegedly sent more shots on the track Exodus 23-1 where he said, contracts all f***ed up, I guess that means you all f***ed up. You signed to one nigga that signed to another nigga that signed to three nigga. Now that's bad luck. Drake was signed to Lil Wayne's Young Money label under Birdman's Cash Money label, which is under Universal Records. So a lot of fans thought the line was aimed at him. It could have been a shot at Wayne too, since his contract was just as complicated. Pusha said the bar wasn't about Wayne or YMCMB, but after the track dropped, Wayne tweeted, F Pusha T and anybody that love him. For the next few years, Pusha and Drake allegedly sent some sneak disses at each other, but none too wild. Then in 2016, the beef really started heating up. Pusha called out Drake for using Ghost Riders on the track HGTV with the line, It's too far gone when the realest ain't real. I walk amongst the clouds so your ceilings ain't real. These niggas call of duty cause they killings ain't real. With the questionable pen so the feeling ain't real. Drake clapped back on two birds one stone and said Pusha wasn't really pushing weight like he raps about. He said, but really it's you with all the drug dealer stories. That's gotta stop though. You made a couple chops, now you think you choppo. Pusha waited a couple years to respond, but he came back heavy on the track Infrared. He aired Drake out again for allegedly hiring Quentin Miller to write his verse on the track Rico back in 2015, rapping, the gang's his beats is banging, your hooks did it, the lyric penning equal to Trump's winning. The question is how the Russians did it. It was written like Nas, but it came from Quentin. Drake clapped back less than 24 hours later. He decided to take the situation to the next level on Duppy Freestyle. He sent shots at Kanye, then went after Pusha with, must have had your infrared wrong, now your head in the beam. Y'all is spitting image of whatever jealousy breeds. Don't push me when I'm in album mode. You're not even top five as far as your label talent goes. He also challenged Pusha Street Cred again with, man, you might have sold the college kids for Nike and Mercedes, but you act like you sold drugs for Escobar in the 80s. Drake addressed the Quentin Miller situation too and said that he was just trying to help the dude make it in the industry because he was working at Kroger when he met him. At the end of the track, Drake says he's gonna send Kanye an invoice for the clout he gave Pusha by beefing with him. Pusha tweeted, send the invoice for the extra 20, and Drake actually followed through and posted a $100,000 invoice on Instagram for promotional assistance and career revival. Then Drake's homegirl and label mate Nicki Minaj hopped in to defend him over the ghostwriting situation. She tweeted, gonna run that Quentin shit in the f***ing ground, like Drake don't write for himself and others. Your enemies will remix, reinvent, and try to make you relive some old shit for years to come when they have nothing on you. Knock it off. Challenging the chosen ones only awakens the sleeping giant. Duppy Freestyle was a tough diss track, and a lot of fans were already saying Drake won. But what happened next shocked the whole world and made this beef legendary. On May 29th, 2018, Pusha dropped the story of Adi Don. The artwork was a picture from 2008 of Drake wearing blackface, which would have been a bomb all by itself. Pusher really went for the kill with the lyrics. 
He started off the track by going after Drake's mom Sandy and his dad with the bar. You mentioned wedding ring like it's a bad thing. Your father walked away at five. Hell of a dad thing. Marriage is something that Sandy never had, Drake. How you a winner, but she keep coming in last place. There was a lot of things fans thought Pusha would talk about on the track, but nobody expected what came next. It's hard to keep secrets when you as famous as Drake, but Pusha dropped a bomb and broke the news that Drake had a son with an ex-porn star named Sophie Brousseau that he was hiding from the world. He said, you are hiding a child. Let that boy come home. Deadbeat muff playing Border Patrol. Keeping your child out of the spotlight ain't a bad thing. But Pusha says Drake was just waiting to announce his son at the same time as his new Adidas line launched. After the track dropped, Pusha went on The Breakfast Club and said that Drake was going to name the line Adi Don after his son Adonis. Pusha ended the track by going after Drake's homie and producer OVO40 with the lines, OVO40 hunched over like he 80, tick tick tick, how much time he got, that man is sick sick sick, I got the devil flow, 666, six, six. surgical summer with it, snip snip snip. 40 was diagnosed with a condition called multiple sclerosis that causes numbness, tremors and bad posture. And Pusha proved that nobody was safe with these bars. Drake's Duppy freestyle was hard, but after the story of Adi Don dropped, it was like a bomb went off. Fans was waiting for Drake to respond, but instead, he up on Instagram to talk about the blackface picture. He wrote a long message about how the picture was from when he was an actor, and it was supposed to represent how African Americans were once wrongfully portrayed in entertainment, and to highlight and raise our frustrations with not always getting a fair chance in the industry. Fans was worried since the beef was so personal, someone could end up getting killed. But the CEO of Rap A Lot Records, Jay Prince, said he called Drake to end the situation before it got worse. He told DTLR Radio, I made an OG call to Drake this morning, telling him, I don't want you to respond to this. We're gonna put this to bed. We're gonna put this to bed because we can't get into the pig pen with pigs. Because pigs turn into hogs and hogs get slaughtered. Drake ain't dropping another diss but he allegedly put out a 100k bounty for any info he could use against Pusha. Rumors was flying that Kanye is the one who told Pusha about Drake's son, but Pusha went on Joe Budden's podcast and broke the news that the info came from inside Drake's camp. He said, 40 sleeping with a woman, he talks to her daily, five, six hours a day, and ultimately, he speaks about how he's disgruntled about certain things, notoriety and things involving Drake and his career and so on and so forth. With all that came the fact that Drake has a child. With that also came the trip that everybody took to go see the child and bring him gifts. And all this information. She divulged this information. After the story of Adi Don, the beef cooled off. Then, in April 2022, a Jack Harlow song leaked where Drake allegedly sent shots at Pusha. One of Drake's lines on the track says, All I hear is plug talk coming from middlemen. All I hear is tall tales coming from little men. If I see you, I spit in your faces. They tone us with the green faces. Fans started going crazy because they thought the beef was back on. But Pusha went on The Breakfast Club and said it sounded like an old burst and that it wasn't worth responding to. He said, then it's like, even what is the consider? Like, the shots. It's like, bro, after what I've done, like the middleman talk and all that type of talk, that's not like, that's not scathing for me. I'm here to like, burn down everything. After Kanye and Drake squashed their beef, rumors started going around that Pusha was cool with Drake too. But Pusha told The Breakfast Club, I felt like it was good for them. I feel like that's gonna work for them and what they do. I really don't stand anything to gain from squashing anything. They play an industry game. I'm not entertaining it, but there's nothing I want from the situation. I don't wanna do a record. I don't wanna do none of that. For now, it looks like the beef is basically dead, but Pusha still ain't trying to link up and be homies with Drake. If something happens and they double back, Pusha says he's ready for anybody, anytime. He told The Breakfast Club, I got a file of just fire for whatever. That's for everything. That's for the world. There's a file cabinet full of death.